We have been shooting for a while. Today I am reviewing the Olympus 150mm f2 lens. This lens is for the four-third system but I have an adapter on it to adapt it to the micro four-third system and as you can see our model today who is Erica is holding it but this lens is pretty huge. I just want to prove a point that a lot of people say micro four-thirds you cannot blur the background or you cannot get good portraits from this type of system but with this lens, you can actually really blur the background. This is equivalent to about a 300 millimeter f2 in full frame turns, but the field of view turns into about a f4. And of course, our model to help us today is... Hi guys, I'm Erica Tomata. I'm 20 years old. Um, this is my second shoot that I've ever done. So um, I don't have a lot of experience with modeling. Um, I'm here today because I'm running for Miss Earth 2019. And I'm here with James and Gottfried, and they're helping me out. <laughs> You've seen some of the pictures already taken yeah. with this lens. Yeah. What is your first impressions of it? They're awesome. They're really nice quality. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen any pictures like that before. I think uh, it's pretty unique because uh, the lens is very telephoto. Mm -hmm. So it really compresses the background. That makes it appear closer to you but at the same time it really blurs it out so of course you being the model the main subject you're very sharp and in focus and yeah. everything else just like melts away mm -hmm. so we still have uh some time left uh second outfit and we may move to a different location uh towards the end of the photo shoot Oh man, it's all you. Minimum focusing distance of this lens is about 4.59 feet. The filter thread is pretty large at 82 millimeters. So it may be kind of hard to find filters for this lens and also 82 millimeter filters are pretty expensive. This lens is pretty heavy at about 3.24 pounds. So when I'm having Jalissa, who is Erica's sister, um, hold the lens, I have to ask her if she can hold it from the lens itself and not by the body. I'm just worried about the lens mount actually breaking off because it is so front heavy with this Micro Four Thirds system. lens looks so huge on the on the micro four thirds system the olympus em1 mark ii and i'm using the uh, lumix adapter it is by panasonic dmw ma1 this lens feels really great in the hands book quality is superb and on the side there's some dials where it'll let you focus from 1.4 meters to infinity or 4 meters to infinity or 1.4 to 4 meters only the um, front lens uh, element is pretty huge and this lens is uh, really huge but it has ED elements um, as well as super ED elements. For that super smooth bokeh, this has nine rounded diaphragm blades. This lens has 11 elements in nine groups. 
Of course, the motor is autofocus, but not super quick on the Olympus EM1 Mark II, but even worse on the Panasonic G9. That's why I'm using the uh, OMD EM1 Mark II uh, with this lens on the Panasonic G9 because it's contra contrast detection. It hunts in focusing, but with the uh, Olympus, it's pretty smooth, but not as quick on a native uh, four-thirds system. Uh, this also has a removable tripod collar. We're gonna shoot behind me at this uh, Rotunda and Erica should be coming out of her car now. What you notice is the E1 Mark II has a hard time trying to focus against a backlit sun. And I think it's because of the adapter uh, with this lens. With na native lenses, I know it doesn't have any problems at all. Uh, I'm using face de detection, but it really has a hard time trying to detect Erica's face when the sun is coming in through the lens, even though I have the lens hood on. So I need to change the focus to just focus point only. And um, That'll, that'll work better versus the um, face detection. Right now it's having such a hard time doing face detection with the sun in the background. Okay, I'll be taking shots. Some positives about this lens is it's equivalent to 300 millimeter on a full frame camera and f2 which means it lets f2 amount of light in but the field of view is about an f4 so think of it as a 300 millimeter f4 for portraits and as you can see or already have seen in the video it can really blur the background nicely and compress it uh, another good feature about this like i said earlier really well built you know it could take a beating. Uh, the negatives is, of, of course, it's really heavy on a micro four thirds system. You can only get good performance on an Olympus EM1 body that does have face detection. And the other negative is I do have to step ways back, like maybe 50 feet if I want to get a full body shot of Erica. And if I need to get maybe like a head shot or half body shot, I'm still kind of uh, far away at about 20 feet. So far, Erica, how do you like to photo shoot? Um, the photo shoot is really nice. Um, the photos are coming out fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think stepping back 50 feet is going to be worth it. Oh, good. I think you can still hear me, right? Like 30 yeah. or 50 feet. Yeah. I just need to project my voice a little bit. There is a lot of traffic behind us. And I was surprised that Erica can still hear me um, giving directions. So um, yeah, you can actually get away with nice portraits with a telephoto lens like this. OK, we'll keep on shooting. So keep All right, we are done with our photo shoot. As you can see behind us, the sun has set. Around this time, October, November on Guam, sun sets a little early around six o'clock or 6.05 p.m. And we started shooting around 4 p.m. So we always work against light and we had about two hours uh, to shoot, but we got a lot of good shots as you probably have seen already in the video. And I'm really loving this lens, how it really blurs the background, how Erica, you're so sharp. The only disadvantage, I think, is just me trying to find the space uh, to work with in the environment. Sometimes I may want to get a full body, just have to go like really far back. But Erica, your opinion about the entire photo shoot today? Um, this was a really great experience. I loved um, seeing this lens for the first time and seeing how it worked. And I think that the pictures are going to come out really beautiful and one of a kind. I can't wait to go home, check out the raw files. 
and just check for sharpness, check the smoothness of the bouquet of the photos and just to analyze um, uh, the pictures coming from this lens. I know not that many people have reviewed this lens. I may have stumbled upon one website and I haven't stumbled upon any YouTube uh, review videos reviewing this lens. So I hope I can give everyone enough information about this lens and this may help you even go out to purchase it for portraits or maybe even landscapes or uh, maybe wildlife. Thank you for always watching Guam Photography and please sus subscribe. All right, let's look at some raw images. I just want to say that the ISO of all the images will be stuck at 400. I assume the camera was in auto ISO. When I was shooting, I did notice the shutter speed was really high to one eight thousandths of a second. And I was going to check what ISO the camera was at, but then I got distracted. And the images were coming out with a good exposure at the back of the camera. So I just kept on shooting um, throughout the photo shoot without checking the ISO. Uh, we always work against the sun. And right now in October, the sun sets about 6 p.m. And we started to shoot a little bit after 4. So I didn't want to waste any time. So. Uh, if you're wondering why the ISO is always at 400. So this first image, uh, this is how the raw file looks, at, looks like out of the M1 Mark II. But what I usually do is I change the profile. I found that camera neutral is a little bit still, a little bit flat to me. So I went for camera vivid and it actually makes the picture come to life. So other than the camera color profile that's changed, let's zoom in. And as you can see, it is very sharp, shot wide open. And all the pictures you're going to see, this lens has been shot wide open at f2. I really wanted to blur, blur the background and see how sharp this lens is, shot wide open at f2. And again, it gives a really nice uh, blurred background 3D, 3D effect with the Erica here. Let's look at uh, the next raw image. This has been edited already in Lightroom using Camera Vivid as a color profile. The background is so smooth. There's no harsh um, lining anywhere in the background. Very smooth bouquet. And F2, again, very sharp. I don't see any chromatic aberrations at all. Uh, next photo I want to show you, this is also, this is also a um, RAW file, again, edit, edited in Lightroom. Again, look at the background, super smooth. Zooming into Erica's face, eyelashes are super sharp. And just look at the sun hitting her jewelry. There's no color fringing that I can see, no chromatic aberration. It's very well controlled with this lens. Okay, next outfit. This is an edited photo. I did have a hard time focusing on Erica because the sun was coming uh, out behind her. I think it's because the lens isn't a native lens. I had to use a four thirds to micro four thirds adapter. So maybe uh, the communication with the camera to the, or the communication with the lens to the camera wasn't that great, but I just had to use a single focus point to Erica's face and it came out okay. But I do want to show you the flares or ghosting that this lens does produce. This is a raw file. Just using camera vivid. Let's do a reset. Yeah, just using camera vivid. And as you can see, this is straight out of camera, just using camera vivid profile. There's a nice ghosting with this lens. The lens flare is really nice. Now, let me show you another example of the lens flare here. Uh, this one right here, this is, this is edited in a Photoshop, but as you can, this wasn't added in Photoshop. It was just coming out with the sun, uh, nice lens flare. And overall, I noticed that this lens is very contrasty. It is super sharp at F2. Here, let me show you an edited. Um, I, I, I don't edit for sharpness. I just, le I just left it as is. Very sharp, as you can see, super sharp lens. Uh, one more picture. Yeah, again, there's another yeah nice purple lens flare coming coming out from the um, middle of the photo. And if you see this pattern here, this is actually um, Lightroom is causing this. I do notice the patterns change sometimes depending on if I zoom or zoom in or zoom out. 
Um, but this lens is super sharp at f2. The bokeh is very smooth, awesome lens. It is full frame equivalent to a 300 millimeter f2. f2 is always going to be f2 because that's the amount of light the lens lets into the sensor. But if, you, if you're talking about field of view, this turns out to be a 300 millimeter f4 field of view on a full frame camera and using this for portraits is just awesome. You can really isolate your subject. Uh, but again, the negatives is just the working distance. You have to be pretty far. Thank you for watching Guam Photography and as always, please subscribe.